today we are on Lesson 21 in 3rd Grade Bible. The materials you will need for today are work text pages 33 and 34, a brown crayon, a green crayon, and glue and scissors. In our last lesson, I told the account of Korah's rebellion. Do you remember that? Korah and his followers rebelled against the authority of Moses and Aaron. And I ended that account by telling you that God was going to destroy all of the people. But Moses and Aaron prayed, asking God not to destroy all the people just because of one man's sin. Then they waited to see what God would do. Now, In the Bible account that you will hear today, you will find out what happened next. The name of today's Bible account is Korah's Judgment, and this is found in number 16, verses 23 through 40. When we worshiped God in the tabernacle, he would have us burn incense before him in a censer like this. Remember Korah? He was the man who sinned against God, leading the other Israelites to rebel against him as well. 250 men had joined with him, and two other men had refused to burn incense before God. He was ready to destroy the entire nation. Moses and Aaron had asked God not to destroy all the people because of Korah's sin. The Lord then spoke to Moses, telling him to instruct the Israelites to get away from the tents of these three men who had had the biggest part in the rebellion, Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, and not to touch any of their belongings. So all the children of Israel, except the 250 other rebellious ones, obeyed God. Moses then announced, that the Lord had sent him to lead Israel, and it would be shown to everyone by a test. If the wicked men died naturally, the way most men die, then the people would know that the Lord had not guided Moses. But if the Lord caused them to die in an unusual way, by having the earth open and swallow them up with all of their belongings, then the people would know that these wicked people were disobeying the Lord. So what happened? Did the men continue to live and die later of natural causes? No. As soon as Moses finished speaking, the earth opened and swallowed up Korah, Dath, and Abiram, their families and all of their belongings. The other Israelites began to run away because they were afraid that the earth would swallow them up too. Then God sent a fire and burned up the 250 other rebellious men who'd offered incense. All those people, rebellious people, God punished their sin in only a few moments. Then God had Moses instruct Eliezer, Aaron's son, to pick up the censers left behind by these men who had been destroyed. God had them melt down the censers to make broad metal plates to cover the altar, to remind the Israelites not to be foolish like Korah and his followers had been. One of the ways that proves God's existence is the fact that God shows himself in nature Romans 1 verse 20 says, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. You know, God still uses nature today to reveal himself. I'm going to tell you a true account from World War II where God used nature to answer prayer. This is a picture of the English Channel. The English Channel is part of the Atlantic Ocean and it is located between the countries of France and England on the continent of Europe. 
there is a city in France located near the English Channel called Dunkirk. During World War II, the German dictator Adolf Hitler tried to conquer the French and English armies. He managed to trap the English and French soldiers at the city of Dunkirk. Hitler's German soldiers were in front of the English and French soldiers. On the other side was the English Channel. They were definitely trapped. The people back in England had a day of prayer for the trapped soldiers. And God answered their prayers in an amazing way. Hundreds of boats journeyed across the English Channel to rescue the soldiers. Now, crossing the English Channel was usually difficult because of the strong winds and fierce waves. Well, God not only kept the English Channel, channel calm and smooth for nine days, but also covered the harbor with clouds and mists. Since the clouds and mists were covering the harbor, the Germans in the planes flying above could not see the soldiers and did not know where to drop their bombs. As a result of God's answering the prayers coming from England, almost all of the 400,000 soldiers were rescued. Today, what happened at Dunkirk is one of the most memorable rescues of World War II. Now that account from history relates to our memory verses too. Trusting in the Lord rather than trusting in or fretting because of men. Let's say our memory verses together. Psalm 37, 1 and 2. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Now David is the writer of this psalm, and there were people in David's life that were evildoers. But did he worry over them or did he put his trust in God? Well, one evildoer in David's life was Goliath. Goliath and his people, the Philistines, were enemies of God and God's people. Well, when David came out to fight against Goliath, Goliath made fun of him. David could have given in to Goliath's taunting, but he was strong in the Lord. And as a result, God allowed David to kill Goliath. Well, another evildoer in David's life was King Saul. King Saul became an evildoer in the sight of the Lord, and he actually tried to kill David. But David did not let a fear for King Saul ruin his trust in the Lord. And actually, God allowed David to take over as king. Let's go over some catechisms now that have to do with what we're talking about. The first question is, is God pleased with those who love and obey him? And the answer is yes, for he says in Proverbs 8, 17, I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. That is a neat promise, isn't it? Let's look at another catechism question. Is God displeased with those who do not love and obey him? And the answer is yes, for he says in Psalm 7, 11, God judgeth the righteous, and God is angry with the wicked every day. Now, at this time, I would like for you to get out work text pages 33 and 34. Well, first of all, we will look at page 33, and let's read this paragraph together. God's word makes it clear that those who are wicked do not go on living and prospering. Sooner or later, they wither like a green plant that is cut down. Now this is where you're going to need a brown crayon and a green crayon. So make sure you have that available to use. And you also need a pencil or a pen. Let's read the directions together. Read the verses and write the names of five people who did evil in the sight of God. Circle in brown their names on the puzzle at the bottom. So you are going to look up these five references and then color in brown their names down here. Now the reason why we're going to color them brown 
is because they were evil doers, so they withered. And that's what happens when a plant is cut down. It usually turns brown. Now let's look at the other side. Read the verses and write the names of five people who did what was good in the sight of God. Color in green, their names on the puzzle. Okay, so you look up these references and find the person who did good in the sight of God, and then down here you'll color in green their names. And we're going to color them in green because they prospered and they grew in the Lord because they did right. Okay, now let's look at page 34 on the other side. Page 34. What happened then? Let's see what we're going to be doing here. Read the squares, cut the squares out, and glue each one with the matching circle that tells what caused it to happen. So down here we have five squares, and you're going to use your scissors and cut out each square, and then you will glue it across from the circle that it corresponds with. Okay, so our first one, let's just do this one together. It says, God told Moses to speak to the children of Israel. And you will find the square down here that goes with God told Moses to speak to the children of Israel. Which yellow square do you think goes with that circle? It is this one. He told the children of Israel to get away from the tents of the rebels. Okay, so do you remember that? They had to get away from Korah and Dathan and Abiram. So you will glue that square next to that circle. Now as soon as you are done watching today's lesson, I would like for you to complete work text pages 33 and 34. Now at this time we are going to sing the hymn that we've been learning. Do you remember the name of it? It's May the Mind of Christ My Savior. And we will begin with stanza one. Okay, so let's sing stanza one of May the Mind of Christ My Savior. It tells us how important it is to have the mind of Christ in us because he will then control what we do and say and we want to please him in our words and actions. Well, let's sing stanza two now, okay? I hope you sang along with those stanzas. It is very good to sing about Christ and about what He is to us and what He can do for us. I want you to remember that the mind of Christ should live in Christians from day to day, and the Word of God should live in Christians' hearts from hour to hour. That pretty much means all the time, doesn't it? Now, how can the mind of Christ and the Word of God live in Christians daily? Well, you can read and memorize the Bible and learn what God wants for you. And you can sing and talk about the Lord. And you know what? It's also good to be around others whose lives glorify God. Well, we have come to the end of our lesson. I want to remind you one more time to finish up your work text pages, and I'll see you next time.